hey everyone, welcome. Abrax Presfis, Damocles Cage. Uh, we got a unique episode tonight. Uh, it is a Scott and I. Uh, we're actually looking forward to this one because it's going to be kind of interesting in terms of like um, kind of the dynamic of it all and everything. Uh, everyone is off at cons or unloading cargo right now, like literally unloading cargo. So that's kind of what's how it's shaken down, but that happens. It's not a big deal. We, uh, we all wish them well. We'll be back on the 10th. Uh, with for the full crew here, but um, I thought I'd, I'd take a moment here and kind of uh, preach about our Patreon. It's a great way to support us. That and Kofi, uh, you can go on there and Kofi and do a one-time uh, donation. It's a great way to help us out. Another way too is to uh, subscribe to our Patreon, where you can participate and get some previews. Um, our patrons actually know who our next guest is going to be on the. Uh, October 10th and we'll be sharing that information with everybody here at the end of it. I'm very excited to have them. Uh, we will be doing a charity stream as well, uh, benefiting World Central Kitchen that night too. So uh, you can tune in and uh, donate for that one. That's a, that's a great opportunity. We'll talk more about that here. I'm um, hoping to have some more uh, kind of stuff going on. How you doing, Scott? I'm good. Yeah? And honestly. How's the, the what's that? Right. The weather's nice here, which is kind of rare. And weather is nice here right now. That actually is true. Like it's actually gotten pretty nice here in uh, uh, California. It's kind of shocking. I think but, we're due for a warm up though soon. I think it's supposed to be up close to ninety. Uh, is yeah, I can I can see that definitely uh, popping up and uh, being a burden as it would be. Uh, oh yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward. To actually, this weekend is a big bad con. I know that myself will be there. Maria will be there. Uh, I'm running two games of the Expanse that are full, at least as far as I know, um, as far as last time I looked. But I'm really gonna, I'm gonna have a blast there and uh, share more about this and like, and I hope to come back and talk about it when I, when I when we come back here on the 10th. But anyways, uh, without further ado, folks, we will be uh, running our game here momentarily. So go ahead and watch our opening credits, and uh, we'll be on. So, not sh this is shortly after uh, the kind of rescue operation of the uh, electric fog at the towards the edge of the ring in the Aether uh, system. Combat broke out between the Ice Fang and the Adrian Rogers. The Sinclair inserted itself uh, and managed to help uh, the Ice Fang end the fight quickly. Um, the Adrian Rogers is damaged. It has a lost torpedo tube. Some thrusters are gone. But they've largely uh, rolled over for uh, the forces that be, namely that they're not going to keep on trying to like long have a long fight. They know they can't take two on one, basically. Is what it comes to. Um, the salvage operations of the Electric Fog are underway. The Sinclair is loading up. Uh, you got Zenny, uh, Myrtle, and Wax are all back there, along with the crew there, uh, rescuing the uh, the crew of that ship, but also trying to figure out what they can salvage and bring back, um, stock up, and the like uh, for the the about two week trip home uh, back to Mundos. Uh, however, though, the concern has been what to do about the Adrian Rogers. Uh, Wyatt and your two uh, security individuals, Ralph and Sue, I, I believe that was Ralph and Sue. From, from it was, yeah. yeah. Ralph and right Sue. Um, yes, let's, let's get their names. This, this would be good. Uh, they, um, they're currently uh, on on board the Ice Fang. You, you, the three of you are on board the Ice Fang. It's a pretty tiny ship. Um, it doesn't. It has like crew quarters for basically like the four on board. Um, there's like a single bathroom. Uh, the galley's more of like a panel on a wall uh, in that in the sleeping space and everything. 
Uh, they don't have a machine shop. I mean, it's just engineering is like, here's access to the reactor and stuff. They don't, the ship's not really built to be repaired on the, on the fly. That's kind of a major disadvantage. Um, but it's a, it's a tight ship and uh, you've been welcomed aboard by Captain Vega um, to negotiate and talk to the Adrian Rogers about um, whatever it is you guys want to do with them. And that's kind of the, the, the current question at hand. Uh, they thought they thought that like doing a real time conversation about these, um, the new Burham uh, folks and what to do with them. Um, as, as far as you know, the Rogers has, uh, I cannot remember how many people it has on board. Let me look that up real quick. It has, I can tell you it's more than four. <laughs> it's a pretty good size ship. It's a bit bigger than the Sinclair. Not like huge compared to the Sinclair, but it's, it's bigger. Um, yeah, it has, it has a, it should have about 24 people on board. And as far as like what you've been told or what you guys have kind of discerned, they might have one or two casualties, but you're not sure yet. Have they given us any indication of why they did what they did? Uh, Vega's been just kind of more negotiate. He's he seems more like I don't really care why they did it. They did it, and that's kind of enough for us to figure something out. But I think that blowing them out of the sky is a bad idea. It's kind of what you've kind of gathered from um, Captain Vega. Yeah. So he is, and then. Uh, yeah, so, and then the the Adrian Rogers is captained by Frank Edwards. Um, yeah. But yeah, Vega is just like, um, he, he's just kind of, these guys are jokers. It's kind of his attitude. He's not, he's really not happy about their um, uh, actions, to say the least. But uh, he also thinks that wasting a ship of this size, of this caliber, would be a uh, mistake. I think, let me see how much bigger this is than um, poor guys' ship. Oh, it's actually smaller than your ship, but it's 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 smaller than your ship, but it's more like it's like like thicker. I don't know how to put it. like it's just, it's a it's like bigger uh, in the width. It's not as um, your guys' ship's kind of kind of slender to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's a little it's a, it's technically bigger, but it's not longer if that makes sense. All right, all right. So there, there it is. Cool. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so you're, you're on board. Uh, you get into the, you get onto this uh, this Asp attack ship. It's an MCR ship. It's been a long time since you've been on an MCR uh, end ship, but this is this is like a make and model. Remind you know you you've not as a training or serving on a ship like this because it's kind of a an interceptor. Um, but yeah, you're on a uh, you're on the ship and uh, Vegas at the airlock uh, greets you. Um, and uh, pretty much the airlock goes straight into like their munition store. It, it's like it's called it a cargo bay. It was, it's like called it a closet, like a storage locker. I mean, it's <laughs> not. I guess technically, you know, but but um, yeah, he's he's standing there. Uh, greet you as you come on board. Goes to uh, you know, shake your hand, and such. Shake it back. Yeah, shake it back, and uh, you have your two crew. And he I'm goes. Why I'm in the ship the whole time too. I want to look for any. Just be observant of any weaknesses I might find, just for future reference. Uh, the main weakness of the ship is that they can't repair it. Like they can't do major repairs. They can do some repairs here and there, but they can't do like if if you like blow a, a big chunk out of the hull, like they're not repairing it. If their fusion reactor goes offline, they're probably not going to repair it. You bring a torpedo tube, they're probably not going to repair it. They don't have they have replacement parts, but they don't have like um, machine shop. Although you'd imagine the Cryo brand probably has like crap because that's pretty that's a pretty damn big ship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he goes, well, welcome aboard, Exo. Um, glad to glad to see you here, and uh, hopefully we can fi find a way forward with these folks from New Burham. I'm kind of interested to see what they have to say about everything. Absolutely. And he's there by himself. Um, he does have a sidearm on him, but he's like wearing a uniform. Um, like it's it looks like the stars, it's just like security uniforms, the kind of that same kind of like distribution of color. Um, mm -hmm. but he's just kind of like uh. You know, he's just chilling out there. It's like kind of like a gold blue. It's like a black suit, with like gold and blue, like um, pauldrons type thing. And uh, he seems like he's pretty clean, clean kept, actually, all things considered. But yeah, there he is. He's just uh, he's like, all right. Um, well, why don't we head up to the uh, head up to the galley here, uh, our galley med bay sector, whatever you want to call it, and uh, we'll get ahead and figure out what to do on this uh, next uh, next steps here. What are you? What are we doing right now to keep the other ship from doing something stupid? Locked on it. Uh, we got torpedoes ready to fire. 
Uh, from my understanding, your ship too uh, is ready to fire on the ship on, on that on, on Apollo. But also, I don't think they would fire on the Sinclair, namely due to the uh, being so, being in proximity to the electric fog. Uh, well, look, um, I got to open up communications anytime you want to, but I'd rather come up with a, a plan of attack in terms of how to talk to these people. No, I, I agree. I don't think we should just go in willy nilly, and we need to have a good plan that we can see through and. Absolutely. He uh, he points to your. Uh, he goes, uh, "You're two. Uh, um, you're two. You're two security guards here uh, aren't going to need their weapons up above, though, uh, unless they want to stay down here in the cargo bay." And they kind of uh, look. It's up to them. If they want to stay uh, here, they can't leave their uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll we'll stick down here. Uh, they go. All right. He goes. All right. We'll go grab grab uh, one of the grab couches on the side there, just in case you have a problem. All right. Uh, and he takes you upstairs. Uh, it has like a lift that you kind of grab onto and you kind of go up a step here into their galley, effectively. Um, and uh, up there, you you know, it's a basically a table. Uh, like the Sinclair, Sinclair's galley is like easily twice as big as this. They kind of the panel on the wall. Um, you can see where their like kind of quasi med bay is. Uh, it's not even closed off in the room. Like there's not even like enough room for like a wall between it and the... Uh, yeah, you know, what do we call it here the the galley, but yeah, um, he goes ahead and sits down. He says, uh, pull, and he pulls up and like pours up a cup of coffee for you, no problem. I and appreciate that. And you can hear up above his guys are moving around. Uh, there's like supposedly three other ones, I think. And he goes, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. What's uh, what, what's? I guess my question is, what's uh, Mason's Haven's position on this? Where where, they, where would they want to go with this? Well, these people definitely need to face some repercussions for what they've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, as far as how far we should go, I'm all here. I mean, I'm all okay. over for suggestions. Over suggestions? Well, the issue is that we're not exactly uh, geared up here to, how do I say, hold prisoners. Um, neither is uh, Star's Edge, and I don't think Mason's Haven is either. Uh, I do understand they have a quarantine. We, we all have quarantine accommodations, but even that's a problem. And I think that a ship uh, would be too good to waste, too good of a resource here. Uh, they got torpedoes on board, they got supplies, they got people, and they got some smart people too. And I have a feeling not all of them uh, making bad choices all the time. Has their captain said anything to you about why they did what they did? Well, based on what my guess is, is uh, after they took an ass whoop in there and kind of realized they don't have a shot at it, I got, I got a feeling that... Uh, there might be some discord in there, some doubt in the captain's uh, capabilities. These, these people, I mean, they have some vets above amongst their ranks, but not a lot of command structure. This guy here is kind of a Yahoo, did a little bit, did his 20, but he was a grunt from my understanding. This uh, Captain, uh, was it Franklin? What was his name? Uh, Frank Edwards, I believe. Frank Edwards, yeah, this Captain Edwards, he's just kind of a, he did his 20 and he was a grunt, never, no officer command, knew how to, knows how to run the ship for sure, but doesn't know how to like really lead as it would be. So we could deal with him and see how the the rest of the crew wants to handle it. And I mean, if they want to, you know, join us back at the colony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as far as we know, every single member on that on that crew is, a, is an Earther, so they shouldn't have any problem. And uh, knowing the gravity of uh, New Burham, they should be okay coming on, coming down the well. I, I don't think that's a half bad idea. But the question is, should we leave them? I don't know what to what to do with the ship. I mean, we can we can pilot it back to uh, Mundos. Uh, it's still workable. We can fix it. That's not even an issue. Uh, and I feel like having we, a ship like that would be an asset. Can we land it to work on it on the planet, or do we need to work on it up here in orbit? Well, you know, that's a. I can see going either way on it. I mean, the the Kinross has capabilities to fix it up. We got people on the Cryo brand that can go fix it up. Uh, the cryobrain is not built though to uh, accommodate a ship that large. Uh, we got shuttles, we got we we got the ice fang, but nothing that big. Uh, the Jersey Kinross though, that we know it could dock with. Um, that that's a suitable thing. The other idea is just keep the damn thing in orbit, just keep it running, keep it in orbit, keep it ready. Uh, bring it down the well though. You know that's kind of where um, where we're kind of running up against it here. 
What do you mean by that exactly? Well, we only got so much fuel to get up and down. We're not exactly. Uh, we got chemdex on the on the cryobrand, but nothing. We can't produce that much fuel that quickly. Yeah, that's, um, and that's not worth it. So it's a waste of resources. Yeah, so, and it's a lot easier to work with the ships. Although, from my understanding, that, that Phantom class could go down the well, but I don't know how well it's going to go down in, in its current state either. So I think it'd be better trying to prepare it up in orbit. But the question is, do we keep it crewed? What do we do with it? And then do we take everyone off board and talk to them individually and figure out who wants to be a team player and who doesn't? I'm not sure. I think it's a good plan right there. Okay. If, if there to be a team player. And we know right now that we can't get through the ring, right? We well, that that's the, kind of the question. According to the broadcast uh, that you, you guys have been so care, sh- kind of share, and uh, Mr. Pope's, I believe, currently uh, form- formulating his opinions about uh, going through the ring is a distinct tactical disadvantage. They'll see us coming uh, ahead of time and, and be able to get the drop on us. We can't see completely inside the ring. They can't see completely out here, but... <laughs> Uh, they outnumber us inside there, no doubt. I don't oh, know how absolutely. far we would get. But that's the question. I don't know how far we could get. Definitely not back to Earth. Not that far. No. Mm. I think it's too much of a risk right now to even consider anything with it. Now, and based on um, what, what we're looking at with the electric fog, it sounds like <coughs> these guys got a little desperate, or whoever on the other side where there was trying to uh, grab what they could out of the, out of the space while they had the chance. I think the fog, the fog, either they were knew something was up, they got spooked or something and just made a run for it. And that didn't go over well with the powers that be. Yeah. Hopefully we can find out more from their crew as, as time goes on and they get better from everything. I think that's, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think we're going to sift through the data here and figure out what it is. But I think the current uh, plan is just figuring out how long we can last and what we need to keep on lasting and keep on keeping on. Uh, the good news, Mason's Haven is going to be producing its own food readily. The, Good tactic, so we have that going for us. Yep. But uh, aside from that, uh, the question is, do we want to bring down more colonists, or I mean, do we just want to pr- imprison these people, or what? If it sounds like uh, trying to incorporate them might be the best plan. I'm, I don't. I think that's actually a fair idea. I think I think it's the right move. Either way, no matter if we put them in jail or if we incorporate them into the colony, they're going to take up resources that yeah. we they'll get for a long time so well i think i think if they worked and were part of the colony that probably be the best but put them in jails just mean you're gonna have to put more resources to these guys including more people to watch them yeah. not a, prisoners aren't great to take it's not a great uh it's not a great model especially sustainable in our situation honestly i'm gonna be i'll be honest with you uh if i i can see uh orders coming down to just rid ourselves of them uh, but i think keeping them out here would make them desperate and I don't know what they would come up with. Yeah, I don't and I don't want to find out. I think but on the same side, I don't the captain needs to face some some major repercussions for what he's done. Yeah. Is- no, I'm I'm there with you on Edwards. Uh, we're gonna figure that one out here and figure out how his crew is kind of what they what they're considering and what their options are here and see if they actually even have a full full idea of the picture of what's going on. Well look, um we're going to go ahead and uh, set up communication. So let me get this straight. We want to try to bring them down the well, keep their ship, confiscate that, see if we can put it back together, yeah. uh, talk to some people, and see if we're going to bring them back on. It's not a bad plan. I think it worked. We'll keep their ship in orbit and save the fuel that way. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we can keep those, those the ship like that, the thrusters, they can stay in orbit for years. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let me go. Uh, let's go head up to the ops real quick. And uh, he takes you upstairs, uh, two full levels, and you are brought to a, uh, what looks to be like a, uh, the operation thing. So they don't have like a, like a pilot's nest like you do on the Sinclair. It's like Mm -hmm. four chairs equal around this room, each in a corner. Um, And uh, you can see these three other guys there. They, They look like they're disciplined, they're shaved and everything like that too. They have the uniforms on, but you can tell they've been sitting in these chairs for a while. And, uh, you know, one of them goes, Captain on deck, and he goes, ah, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. And uh, he sits down and he goes, all right, well, let's go ahead and uh, open up a uh, tight beam here. Uh, can you give me a tight beam? And he goes, yep, yeah, no problem. He brings it up. And he goes, all right, go ahead and talk to us. Let's see if we can get this guy, so guy uh, on, the, on the, the horn here. So they, they call, you know, they call in. The, the, you can see the signal going through. It's connecting. Um, 
a little bit into it, probably like it takes about like a minute or so to establish the connection. Uh, you see who you, who you understand is Captain uh, Edwards standing there, and, and he's on the bridge of the ship. Uh, and it's a pretty good sized bridge. Uh, it's probably, it, it's actually like more elaborate than the uh, the Sinclair's. Like the Sinclair's has like four chairs on, on its bridge and the, the nest. This has like nine chairs in it, along with a cat. And, and, and he's clearly in a captain's chair, a bigger, a bigger chair with more, more gear on it. It's, different, it's a different color than our chairs in the room. You can see he goes, Captain Vegas, it's uh, good to hear from you finally. Big comes on, yeah. Uh, if you know, this is the EXO of the uh, Sinclair Wyatt Thompson. Uh, him and I are here to help negotiate your surrender. It's, it's our surrender. Uh, is that what you want? Is that what this is? I mean, there's alternatives we could go through, but I think a surrender would probably be the right path forward right now. And what does our surrender entail? You take us prisoner, you execute us? I don't think that's in the cards. Maybe we can uh, work something out. You're definitely going to have to face a little more scrutiny than the rest of your crew, probably. But the rest of your crew could easily come back with us to our colony and be productive members of our society. I see. Come on down the well and be your uh, workforce, I see, is what you're looking for. And, and what would happen to our ship? Just disappear? It could be uh, beneficial if it just stayed in orbit around the planet. Beneficial stay in orbit around the planet. So we're just supposed to give up our warship here, roll over for these people that don't seem to understand what's going on. Uh, well, well, what is it that's going on that we don't know about that maybe you can enlighten us on? Listen, we we caught wind of uh, we caught wind of some of those broadcasts. Some of my men got a little spooked back on Medina Station before we made our way here, and uh, little rumblings. And I, I I kind of brushed it off, but once I started seeing that that cargo ship come through the gate, I put two and two together, and I figured something was going down with the OPA. They're making big moves. Now, what those big moves are exactly, I'm not sure of. So what you do know is that you haven't shared the data with um, uh, Edward yet. Mm -hmm. uh, that is like what's going back on Earth and like the Martian assassination attempt and all this kind of stuff. He, he doesn't seem to know. He knows something was going on, but he doesn't know how big it was. But he knew that like that going back to the gate was probably not going to happen. No, that's definitely a bad idea. It seems like. And so, so yeah, so my issue is um, I'm not really sure why we should be cooperating with you and not just wait for whatever little party that the OPA decided to have on Medina Station to blow over in the next month or so when the UN gets word of it and comes out here and, and kicks ass. Not to mention my people. We have, we have several warships back in, the new, in New Birmingham that we'll bring out. I'm sure we'll be having to support efforts to uh, put Medina in more responsible hands. See, my problem with everything is you came here to get some of our scientists to take back to your colony to right. help you Absolutely. offer assistance. Mm -hmm. You through the gate and decide on your own, knowing that there's other people here, that you're just going to take a whole cargo ship to yourselves. <laughs> well, to be fair, we view the ship at that point as legitimate salvage. It was derelict, was no longer a thrust, was isolated. Um, we viewed it as fair game. So right now your ship's just floating around in space. So is it fair game? Is it legitimate? <laughs> where we could just take... Laughs. He's like, well, our engineering's intact and our Epstein's still ready to fire at any moment. We're only not moving because he looks off to the side to Vega and says, because uh, Captain Vega here has informed us that both the Sinclair and the Ice Fang will fire upon our ship as soon as we begin moving. And we don't we don't really have a high tolerance for pirates in uh in our space, so <laughs> he laughs, these little pirates. That's a good one. That's a good one. What about the pirates that took the back half of that ship? The ones that actually attacked it? They're not over here causing us problems. They're on the other side of that ring causing problems. How about this? <clears throat> I'm gonna 
You said they're Earthers, right? They're Earthers, yeah. How about I share some information with you? That's Please. going to change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And you can either join us, or you can go back through that ring gate just as you are and deal with what's on the other side. Okay. Looks at you puzzled. Okay. All right. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna send him uh, what happened yeah. on Earth. So you, you give him, you send him some of the footage over and like the news reports and everything. He kind of sits there and watches the feed come through and <laughs> he kind of watches it for a second. And you can see some of his men are kind of looking around and, and he like closes it out. I see. This is beyond just the ring space, isn't it? It seems to be that way. I mean, we don't know for sure. We're, I'm not. We haven't sent anybody across the ring gate to see what's going on over there, and I don't think we're going to anytime soon. But whatever's happening over there, is, we don't want that happening here. So if we can all get along, it'll be a much better time for everyone. Yeah. So this is... He takes a second, and uh, he... Uh... He like hits like a mute button or something like that, like real quick to mute himself, or he, he kind of moves like, hand motions like mutes. He, he says something like some sort of order, like you can't see him in his face turn from the thing. And you see everyone kind of like, stand up to their posts and like go like he, like there's like another eight chairs in this room, but like they're only manned by like maybe four or five other people. And you see those five guys like get on the uh, the ladder and go down stairs uh, to the lower levels. Um, and he on the YouTube, and he goes. This goes beyond just Earth. They, they've Wait, taken over Medina Station and beyond, is what you're saying. It's the way it, I mean, from what we got, that little bit of what we sent you, it's the way it seems. And he didn't get to see the whole picture. He's like... All right. Let me uh, review this information. Like, I mean, you sent him a lot of information, so he's like, you know, I kind of want to dig, <laughs> give me a moment to make a decision. Um, can you give me uh can you give me 30 minutes here to make a make a decision? Yeah. That's I think that's acceptable, yeah. Right. He goes uh <laughs> Edward's out and he like hits the button, counts the connection. Vega looks over and he goes, seems okay. Maybe he'll uh maybe he'll get scared straight, huh? Either that or he's gonna do something stupid because he is scared. <laughs> I think that's a fair assessment. Um while you're waiting, do you wanna do anything with like Vega or on the ship or anything? I'll just ask Vega what, uh, why Pope? Why work for Pope when you <laughs> seem yeah. capable anywhere? He laughs when you say that. He's like, why work for Pope? Uh, he pays well, you know? I think he's, um, he does a decent job. Uh, getting offered your, uh, command of a ship is pretty nice. I won't kid you. I'm, uh, quite happy oh, about too. that. Hmm. I say you do, a, you do a pretty good job from, all things we've seen and well I, I appreciate that the vote of confidence there uh that means a lot yeah he says um well hope offered us uh equity in the research so it's financial by all means uh and based on some of the stuff he's done in the past his cryogenic program is pretty impressive um i you know and these new worlds are a good opportunity so whatever kind of new tech uh, is developed on the plant side uh, i know that i will have a uh, invested interest in and profit and so will my children uh going forth uh, luckily my family's uh more dispersed than uh we're not on earth and i have a few men on here that are that are from earth and i know are quite a little distraught he's like saying this in front of his men like he, they, he's like but i also trust every single one of them we know that if we panic we're not gonna get through this that's what makes me worry about this guy this guy's not a He hasn't he seen enough. He doesn't, he doesn't understand the real game. This guy probably, you know, did his 20 watching the watching some refinery that no one really cared about. So what do you think? Should we <laughs> kind of well, repercussions face what he's done? I may be the lead. If you're asking me what I think about what we should do with this ship, that's one question. If you're asking me what we should do overall, that's a different question. That's a question for Mr. Pope. Let's start with the ship and that captain, and that's it. I'm worried about this guy. I think he's gonna get a little wild. I think he's gonna get wild. I don't think we can predict him. I think he's gonna get desperate. He's gonna get mad. He comes off the type that, that likes to figure out why he should be angry first before knowing what's really going on. 
I don't know about his crew. I can't, I don't know. I know jack and shit about his crew. What I do know is that New Birmingham, uh, I mean, you're talking, you know, New Baptist Congregation. Uh, if you're, I don't know if you've ever had much experience uh, being a Martian on the with the Southern Baptists on uh, Mars. You have had experience with this. Remember Guan? Um, th those, the, the Martian version of uh, the Baptist faith is um, reasonable in comparison. Is that is that a fair assessment? I Honestly, this guy right here doesn't view you as, as human anymore, to be honest. So I want to be clear on what kind of person we're dealing with. He's only talking to you because you have a gun to his head. So. Honestly, if it's my if if I have to make the decision today right now, I'd say his crew comes back with us if we can get them to assimilate into the either either colony. Ours, yours, don't really care. <laughs> I, I think you, he, I will, I will tell you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I don't. I don't speak for Mr. Pope, but I'm going to tell you right now, Mr. Pope would not let one single one of them pieces of shit in, into Star's Edge. Can't let them sit around and float around and <laughs> nothing. So. Yeah, they're not going to come on board the cryo brand. They're not going to be on Star's Edge. I can tell you that much. Mason's Haven's their best bet. If, maybe if they're reason, I wouldn't trust them on the Jersey Kinross either. Uh, I would. Some place where you can, uh, the nice, the nice thing about gravity, it's actually not a bad prison. Yeah, I figure we can we can work something out here. I, I think I think hopefully if he's not reasonable, his men will be reasonable, and if they see him being unreasonable, they'll do something. The problem is that we need to see inside that ship. That's what that's where I'm getting at here. Now the problem I have is that I don't have a landing crew. I don't have a boarding team. I don't have an assault team ready to go here. And I don't know if he knows that. That's what worries me. However, though, you got we got you and we got two other two of your own people. Yeah, we could do it. My worry is that he's going to do this as an ambush versus a talk or everything. Or we could try to, like, land, you know, if we go up and try to dock. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what happened getting that close to it. Because the problem is once the ice bank gets that close to that ship, uh, the um, the torpedoes become the torpedoes become uh, suicide bombs. Yeah. We'll kill, we'll kill ourselves trying to, trying to fight them. And then our PDC network's okay, but honestly, actually, their PDC network, it's not a great one, but they got more guns than we do that close. And they can take a lot more damage than this ship. So, I'm a little concerned about what exactly would be the appropriate action here. And the Sinclair is predisposed right now, which I understand, and I think it's actually the smartest move because it gives me resources and can't fire as possible. So, my suggestion would be EVA over there. And we got we got EVA packs. We got you got vac suits. We got a lot of stuff. You got two guys in armor. Land them. Land yourself. Go over and talk to them. See if you can get the crew to kind of talk to you. I don't think it's a bad idea, but they're going to know you don't have a whole crew here probably by doing that too. Well, this this ship will run on two people, no problem. It's meant to take. We we can basically this this there's like the Ice Fang can run with a crew of two people, hundred percent. It's not great. But it's like the Sinclair can run on a crew of four people front to back, and it's actually decent. Uh -huh. it, game stat wise, you don't start taking penalties until you go below below a certain level. Um, okay. But yeah, he's like, we can we can run this. Sh I can run the ship with two people. Now my problem is I'm not about to put myself at risk over there. Pope's not giving me that order, but I can send one of my men over there. Too. Yeah, whoever you think would uh, be the most beneficial to be over there. Who? Martin's yeah. goes. And he, Martin's gets out. Sees us. Uh, sorry, yes, sir. And he, he's all, hey, um suit up you're going outside and he's like yes sir he's like and uh make sure to bring a piece with you yes sir so um uh martin goes downstairs you hear him go down to like the crew quarters he's probably changed or whatever out of his like uniform here and uh baker goes all right well let's go talk to your team and uh let's go in here here from uh uh edwards i can't want to say franklin for some reason uh, Edwards, I, I, I have like the name Tom, like like Edwards, Thomas, and Frank all in my head, like, uh, and it's all throwing me around. I can't think about Frank Thomas back in the nineties. Um, all right, so you uh, you get on uh, the calm comes back after the time, and uh, it's it's uh, back and once again. It's, it's Captain Edwards on the bridge, and Captain Edwards goes, "I reviewed the information you sent, and uh, my decision is that I don't believe that, from my understanding, based on what <clears throat> Marco and Naros is saying." New Birmingham, too, is isolated. 
no one's to come through any of this. Is that is that your understanding as well? And Vega goes, that's our understanding. Yeah. So you're telling me that my people, my nation is under threat, and you're going to restrict me from trying to go back to help them. Do you want to Vega starts laughing his ass off. He's like, Jesus Christ. And you can see Ed, that when he says when he says Jesus Christ, Edwards gets upset. Excuse me? And Vega's like, you heard what I said. He's like, you, you know, the Edwards kind of has this like, you know, he's not happy about that. You're a very angry little man. You know that? If you want to fly right across to that ring gate, by all means, I'll let you go. We'll give you a route. We'll follow you all the way out there. Or... You come back with us. We wait until this whole thing blows over. And then you leave. You can go back to your, we're not keeping you. Well, we're, yeah, we're not gonna keep you, but there's no reason to risk your life or anybody else's life to go see what's going on over there right now. Hmm. Okay, you take this like, uh, make like a, Persuasion test here. Uh, why? Wait, I feel like we need we need some checks. We need to roll some dice. That's what the game's about. Rolling dice. And he did not roll well. See, no. I don't know if you have persuasion or not. I think you have comms. I haven't looked at white sheet for a while, actually. <laughs> yeah, I have leadership, but yeah, I don't this know. is gonna be a persuasion. But I got fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Yeah, he he kind of takes a second and thinks about it, and he says, you know, okay. So an escort back to Mundos. My people, disem me and my people disembark. We get taken down the well, and then we figure out if we can work this calling or not. Now, but we have three attack ships in here. We got the Sinclair, we got the Ice Fang, we got me. You don't think if we all went through together, we'd, we'd stand a chance? And Vega's like, Vega's like, at any one time on Medina Station, there's like 30 ships docked. There, there, at any one time inside the ring space, there's like hundreds of ships. How many of them do you think actually are on their side versus our side? You know, and like, well, you can't know that. You know, the, the OPA is a bunch of jokes. Or, you know, they can't organize you know, anything or do anything. This free Navy sounds like a joke. There's no way they, like, like Marco and Naros has multiple Martian ships at his, at his beck, and, beck and call. Bullshit. Vegas is shaking his head, like, okay. He goes, um... Listen, I think, um... If you're willing to let us part ways, we're parting ways. We're gonna head back to the gate and figure this out. You really... Is that what everybody on your ship wants to do? Uh, excuse me? That's... I'm the captain. I will give them the order that that's what we are doing. I don't care. You, you're right at this moment. You're not the captain. You're under our control until we say otherwise. <laughs> if you think if you think I'm under your control, you're gravely mistaken. He goes and pushes a button. He goes, all right, everyone battle station. <laughs> he goes, everyone on deck. And the guys are coming back in. And he goes, yes, sir. And he goes, um, uh, under, start under uh, how the repair is coming. This is, uh, sir, like they start giving like a repair thing. He says, you, he says, I want more men on there. I want everyone on, on repairs immediately. We're going to ship, ship off here. And the I want to see if we got the ship 100%. Don't worry about the torpedo uh, and try to get that torpedo tube up. And he's like, uh, yes, sir. And like, you can see like some of them are leaving to go repair stuff and everything. And he goes, we're going to figure this out. We're going to make this out one way or the other. You're going to risk that into your entire crew and your life just to be the dick that you seem to be. Um, when you say that, like, it's kind of comes with the comms and like one of his crew members kind of looks at him like, what? He's like, sir, what, what's happening? And he goes, he's all, he's all, uh, don't worry about it. I'm taking care of it right now. And he goes, uh, we're going to go in. Uh, we'll, we wish you the best here in the Aether system. Uh, Edward's out and he, put, and he cuts the signal. And Vega goes, oof. I don't like him, but do you have any way to... And I'm talking to Vega here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it's possible for anybody on your side of the, your crew, or my crew, or any of the other mm -hmm. shit that might be around here uh, to hack into their system and broadcast that video for their whole crew to see I mean we can start we can start broadcasting it that's not a problem we, we can broadcast from here and if they pick it up they pick it up if they don't it might 
might even hit some of their hand terminals, but we would need to get a bit closer to their ship. That's kind of an issue. Uh, we could definitely still be in torpedo range, but they might view us coming closer as uh, aggressive actions. I have a feeling that, that Vega is not going to pick up the communications again. I don't think he's going to either. But if we do a flyby and a pretty good G burn, we can definitely get the signal off and see what happens. Be ready for invasive actions in case they try to do something. I don't. I don't think that's a bad idea. Watching on his other, crew member. But he kind of. He kind of says, "Wait, wait." He kind of takes a second. Actually, uh, why? Give me a tactics roll because you're you're a tactician. You're a smart person. Go so smart. <laughs> Intelligence tactics. Double sixes. So Ooh, maybe. Seventeen plus what the devil. Four, one. What's the devil? Yeah, so you kind of, and I'll let you, you, you blow a bunch of like, you know, stump points, you have kind of stuff. You get this breakthrough. You re recall that he's telling his guys to go out and repair shit. He's not going to high G burn with his guys on the outside. So, and also if they're outside, their gear will be more like liable to be hit by a broadcast. Let's do that. Let's try to hit their, the crews that are out there. It's, Smart move. I mean, we don't want to get quite as close, huh? No, we wouldn't have to. And then, uh, you know, um, maybe a mutiny happens and we get a conversation back here in a little bit. But. All right. Um, you, you take a while and uh, you kind of wait. You see, like, with the scopes on the ice fang are kind of watching, like, people come out and uh, they're, they're sort of repairing stuff. And uh, they goes, all right. There's our guys out there. There's like three guys on the hull right now, kind of like patching stuff up. Uh, it looks like they're trying to replace the thruster, um, trying to clear the, the port and everything. Um, they'll probably be at it for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe. It'll take them a while to do it. And he goes, uh, all right. Uh, he goes, Mr. Jensen. And Jensen, like this one guy, uh, yeah, sorry, he's like, hey, uh, take us in. Get us within um, 500 meters of the ship. And he goes, yes, sir. And you kind of like the engine, you kind of feel the, the kick up of the Epstein. And it starts going in like a steady, like, like it's like a quarter of a G burn. It's not much of a burn. They start going towards it. And uh, as you guys approach it, uh, he goes, uh, set the broadcast off, uh, try a tight beam and uh, broadcast it to those guys on there, hit them. He goes, okay. So the thing starts coming out. Uh, the broadcast kind of goes out, starts pulsing out. And uh, you can see that, like, while the guys are on the thing, you kind of, like, you guys are watching them on the scopes. They kind of start, like, panicking a little bit. And you actually see the PC network on their ship like deploy. Um, it doesn't fire, and it's just it's just like deployed. But like they uh, they go, you can see them kind of like gripping on, like they're like they're getting down. They're actually putting on their mag gloves, which are a thing in the expanse. There are mag gloves. Uh, <laughs> go see Bobby Draper, ask her about them. Uh, <laughs> but just like they get down there, they get down like they kind of like magnetic kind of start like, crawling back towards like the hull. And then, um, but like the the ice bank doesn't have its PCs deployed at all. They kind of brush by, and they overshoot the ship um, after a while. And, and as the guys are crawling, like um, they're keeping the scopes on them, and you see like one of them kind of like looking around a little bit as the ship goes, and you hear like you're not here, but you can see them kind of like they're kind of they're confused and trying to get back into the airlock and everything. Um, so, do you want to see if it takes, or do you want to try something, or what do you want to do here? There's not much wait. to do. Just wait and see what happens. I mean, that's the only real option we have, I think. All right. So they um they take a second here, and you kind of like. Excuse me. Uh, let me, let me look at the layout of this ship real quick, because I'm not intimately familiar with it. I know it to a degree, but not intimately. Um, that is okay. Okay. So they uh. You you sh you kind of like. You wait a little bit. And uh, like maybe like an hour, and their their ship's just kind of sitting there, and the ice fang kind of repositions itself. Their ship kind of maneuvers to like they have be more facing the ice fang, and they um, you start like the ice fang picks up like someone's exit of the airlock and is like on the is on the outside of the ship. And you can see this guy is like like tapping around. He's not going for the damage. He just starts tapping around shit, and like you start getting a broadcast in. And and uh, uh, Vega goes, "There's our guy." <laughs> see what he has to say. All right, so you pick him up, and he goes, um, "Uh, yes." He goes, "Uh, hey, this is uh, 
this is Leon Clark uh, from from the Alien Rogers. Listen, hey, uh, I, we got your information. Is this is this real? Uh, is some of us are debating it. Unfortunately, it seems to be very real. Well, look, hey, like, um, we don't know. The captain's saying we're going to go back to the ring here and we're we're going to meet be met with aggression. We'll be fine. Uh, I don't think a lot of us are kind of questioning that. And he seems pretty um, venomous about it, like like venomous about it. He seems really angry about it, like unsure. And we're uh, some of us are in. Some people are into it. Some people aren't. Uh, like, look, what? what like, what did, you, what did you offer him? Like, what's exactly going on here? We offered a simple deal. You guys come back with us, you know, assimilate into our colony for a little while. When this all blows over, you're free to go. And and what of, what of our ship? It's going to stay in orbit. Uh, we're not going to, we're not taking your stuff. We're not, well, look, we, we have no desire to do that. Look, I, I can um like I I'm I'm the I'm the sensors uh the sensors uh array guy here you know I'm, I'm, I can do some repairs and all kinds of stuff do some mechanical stuff uh listen I don't think I don't think Captain Edwards is gonna let is gonna let that happen he seems pretty adamant about getting the ship repaired and going back through it and some of the people are kind of hesitant one way or the other uh what you guys sent over us everyone's seen it now um and there's a lot of debate if it's real or not some people don't believe it but um. I don't think Edwards is going to give up the bridge of the ship too easily. And I'm worried about what he'll do. So, um, listen, like, what do you guys want us to do? Like, uh, what do you want to do here? Is there more of you that wants to stay and wants to risk going through that gate? There's, there's 24 of us on board. I know at least like five of us are like, we need to talk to these other people and figure out some way to stick around here. There's probably like another seven that are that are super into like, you know, what Edwards has to say here and the like and think he's going to be the, the be all end all. But like and some of us are kind of not sure what's really going on, what's true and what's not. Um, but he's not going to let you talk to them. I, I'm only out here because I'm supposed to be repairing the thruster and, and checking an array here. If uh... If me and a couple of my guys float on over there, can you get us in? I can, I can, I can put a blind spot real quick on on the ship. And if you float into that vector, I can get you on board. Yeah. Do that. Expect that. I'm not making any promises yet, but have that set well, up. Look, I, I'm gonna go tell them that I got the machine apart. There's something we're missing, and we're gonna do it. Uh, if you can, if you can EVA over here, start your EVA action in the uh, start the action in like forty five minutes, uh, and make that make that jump in maybe like that equal amount of time will take me to repair it. I get you in, okay? All right, fully expected. All right, uh, yeah, thanks, um, uh, Clark. <laughs> Clark out, and he cuts off, and he goes back. You see him on the screen. He's going back to repair it, and you can see him all like calm. He's talking to someone. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he's kind of, and Vegas goes, like, straight up EVA action, trying to sneak onto a ship that some son of a bitch wants to kill you. It's a bright move. I, I lean more towards stupid, but. Yeah, that's a fine I, line. I mean, Listen, you, um, you, let him just go. I mean, I have no stake in this. I'm not, I mean, that sounds terrible, no, but. No, I don't think any of us are, <laughs> there's. Listen, there's one thing the Belters do well is not waste anything, and I think wasting this ship would be a uh, blowing it up. We might as well blow it up ourselves right now. No, no, I agree. Yeah, and it sounds like some of the people on there went off, and I and I'd rather uh, show them a act of good faith than. Uh, well, listen, get your team together. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send my boy with you, and you guys can go head over there and see what happens. All right. It works. Um, so it sounds like we got an hour here to kit up. So you guys take some time. Uh, all of you, your, your two guys have armor. You don't have armor, uh, but you got your little shotgun combo assault rifle. Your guys, you, know, you guys have assault rifles. Uh, their guy has an assault rifle as well. Um, they do have like charges on here and I mean, they can blow holes in the hull. They got like some pretty decent gear on the ship. Like they're ready to, if they needed to board a ship to board a ship. Ships like this are usually used to like intercept. Typically they were used to like intercept um, 
like pull people over. It's like a police interceptor. That's the best way to describe it. Um, so yeah, but they're they're ready to. I mean, they can go. They can uh, set you up no problem and send the team of four, the the whole team of four over. Yeah, give me. You got an extra one of those hull breaches in case uh, shit hits the fan. Yeah, then they got that. Yeah, that's not all. They'll hook you up with that, no problem. Oh, they, they're one guy. Hold. He has it set up though. He has it ready on his like on his on his gear here. Uh -oh. That's all we need. And uh, they go, yeah, bring a toolbox, all that kind of stuff, just in case you need to get in there. But it sounds like our guy Clark there is going to let us in. Yeah, I mean, this is our better. It's worth trying. I mean, I'm liable to get shot, but <laughs> well, that's you know, listen, getting shot in space. You're more likely to uh, suffocate, so you'll be fine. <laughs> all right, so Vega like positions the ship a little bit. They're within a decent distance. And uh, you guys get outside the ship, kind of on the back end of it, where they, they can't see you. It kind of takes some time to walk around. And uh, the time rolls around, the time frame. Uh, you guys do see um, uh, this guy, Clark, who, like, someone come out of the airlock, and, like, they're going back to that position they were trying to fix earlier. Okay. Right. So I think it's time to do the do the thing here. See how well it works. Sounds like a plan. Let me find my... I totally forgot to. You know, I I I, I haven't done my uh, I haven't done an overlay for the. Um, uh, I totally forgot to add the churn counter for the overlay for a um, two player game because <laughs> we usually only play the two players per bonus episodes. So like I don't have a full layout. We don't do the churn during bonus episodes because that was kind of funny. So I I up the churn actually to like uh, twelve. All right. Um, so you guys get out and you set for the EVA and you see the guy up there and he's like going to be out there for forty five minutes. It'll take you a while to make the EVA action, but you guys can certainly do it. Um, you start accelerating out, out, and out, uh, making it closer and closer. And you can see the guy down there. Um, he's kind of repairing it. Uh, do you want to try to contact him? Do you want to try to like just land on the thing? What do you want to do here? Um, I don't want to contact until we're close. Okay. How close is close? Like 20 meters, 50 meters? By that time, you're almost going to be there. Yeah, I'd say like 50 meters or so. Okay. They start coming in. And um, at that point, like you, you set out like a, um, you can set like a, you can kind of beam to his his suit basically, and um, he kind of like stand, he kind of sees that, and he, like he gets a message. You can see him moving on the thing. He doesn't talk to you. He, he kind of just sends you back like a text, saying like, uh, yeah, land land outside the airlock and uh, be ready to enter. Okay, follow that. And um, the uh, you guys hit the hull. Uh, he kind of like stands up and sees you guys over there, and he's like fixing his job, kind of putting stuff away. Uh, it took you like a while. You guys are doing a hell of a space walk here, and he kind of comes out and starts walking like towards you guys, um, and uh, starts kind of pointing at the airlock. Do you guys want to go over the airlock, or what do you want to do there? And yeah, it's, it's like he, he can open. It has like the button to open up and everything. Yeah, I'm gonna go where he's pointing us to. All right. So you, you walk into the airlock, and um, it's. Uh, like it, the the inner doors are sealed, the outer doors are open. Um, you can hear him kind of moving towards you uh, through the through your boots and everything. And uh, he uh, all of a sudden, like the outer doors just close. Like, and he's not in there with you. Hmm. And uh, the comms kind of come on. The airlock starts to like kind of pressurize, and the comms come on. You can hear now through the suit. And uh, it goes, um, well, welcome aboard the Adrian Rogers there, um, XO Wyatt Thompson. And it, it's um, it's Captain Edwards. Yeah, I figured it's better for a face-to-face -face conversation than... Uh, and you, you can see the window on the airlock, and he kind of moves over to there, and he's he's in there with, like, three other guys that are armed. And they go, um, daring move. Uh, unfortunately, it seems this little um, mutiny by some of my men has been short-lived. Uh, Mr. Clark is a, is a valued member of this of this uh, craft, but he will be spending the rest of his time out here in the Aether system in the brig. You're not a very good captain, are you? <laughs> he kind of laughs. He's like, I'm a resourceful one, and I managed to uh, capture four of you, so now I have some leverage. I think we still have... We still have most of the leverage here. And what leverage might that be? That you have a series of guns and an airlock where I have guns trained on you and I can simply just 
blow open that back door and have you get thrown out into space anytime. I won't maybe not kill you, but it'll certainly uh, get you off my ship quickly. And then you won't have a ship. It's going to be that simple. You're going to, this is officially no more playing games. I've been nice for way too long on this stretch of road, and I'm kind of tired of it. If you guys want to go over there and risk your lives to go across the gate to be murdered, because that's what's going to happen to you. You hear that, you guys behind him? I'm uh, not talking. The, like- yeah, the two guys that are armed kind of look around. The other guys in the back kind of like, what, what do they mean, like, murder? Captain, like, Kev's like, don't. He's like, are they talking? Is that Inaro's guy real? And, and he's like, you think some belter has managed to, like, assault Earth and kill billions of people? This is foolishness. Why is it why do you say that, Cap? Because the belters are garbage. The skinnies haven't, they can't pull it together. You think they can pull something like this off? Um, no, no. Not unless some, they have the aid of some outside source of divinity, which they don't. You don't seem to understand, Mr. Thompson. God is on our side. <laughs> like the the one dude, like the guy that's like from Vegas teams is with you. And like both like actually the three members of your team, you kind of hear them laughing on the comms when he says that shit. And um, the one guy from Vegas, he was kind of like, he like, he starts tapping into his like suit like thing here. And you get like a little, you get a little message from him on your, you can like see on your wrist thing. And it says like, uh, it basically says reach question mark. Like, it's like, he's like ready to blow this thing open if he wants to, if you want him to. Oh, I'll send back. Yes, just let me talk just right. a little bit. So he kind of, he kind of starts put, he like has his gun holster and he's kind of standing around like, okay, I'm waiting for this shit to get over. But he's got his like charge. He's got the charges on his on his uh, on like a it's like a container on his like waist here, uh, like a like a pouch. And he kind of sits there and he goes, okay. And uh, he goes, so my men have uh, certainly you you certainly shaken my men. If your goal was to shake my men's morale, congratulations. But m- some of us are made of sterner stuff. I think your men that are listening to what I have to say, and I'm talking past him to them. Yeah. I'm like, they know what I'm saying is 100% the truth, or I wouldn't have floated 45 minutes all the way over here for no reason. <laughs> Why would I put myself at risk for people I don't know just to, oh, come live with us. It's going to be a happy utopia. <laughs> it's not. It's, not, it's real life. If you want to go... I kind of lost you there, Scott. I think I lost you on Utopia. Got you there? I think we lost Scott. Me by myself, floating in space, as always. There he goes. There you go. You're back. Are you... I don't know what happened there. Yeah, it is Gee. like it just it just like laughs hard. <laughs> happens. All right. Happens to the best of us. I think it's getting ready to storm outside or something. So oh yeah, I can see that. Let me check. I'll watch my stuff here, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't see any disruptions on my my end. So, but yeah, it looks like. Um, look at that. It happens. The best of us. Our 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 colony is not a utopia. It's going to be hard work, but whenever this is all said and done, and communications can come through, in and out of that ring gate, you're more than welcome to all come back up to your ship, and fly back to New Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Stop you. Nobody on that colony will stop you. Some go. Some are kind of looking around and like looking back and forth. And uh, go ahead. I, why give me like a leadership test here? Give me. You're gonna make an opposed leadership test to this guy. Wow. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Really good. Two Dude. sixes again. Yeah, you're the devil today. So seventeen plus five. Ooh, Twenty-two. Okay. You actually like, barely beat him. He actually got like a 19. He did really well. So you you go ahead and like uh, shoot at him, like you know, you kind of give the space. He goes looks back. Goes, Listen to this guy. You think they're gonna let you live? They'll they'll kill you as soon as you go down. Well, as soon as we got this ship, this ship is the only thing keeping us alive. And one of the guys is like, "Come on, Cap. Like, I think we could just like work with these guys. You know what? You know." And the, the, one of the guys says like, "He's like he kind of says like, you know, that that would be that's like the way of, of what the book says." And he goes, you don't, you don't need to tell me about what the book says. I know what the book says. And uh, they seem to be having some sort of theological debate at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, you definitely undermined his authority somewhat to some of the guys. And the guys with the guns are like, you know, uh, you, uh, 
he kind of comes out and says, look, we're going to have compliance here or not. If you're not with me, you know, you guys can X out that ship with these, with these fine folks anytime you want to. Um, so your your uh, Vega's guys kind of stand there next to, um, did I give him a name? Was that Martins? I think it was Martins. Or the, was that uh, the the guy that came Vega? to you? No, Martins was the, was the pilot on their ship. What was uh, this guy's name? I don't know if you gave him a name. I don't think I gave him a name. If I didn't, I didn't give him a name. I didn't give him a name. So <laughs> let me give him a name. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, this is Jamal. So Jamal uh, kind of sits there and says, he kind of like taps over to you. Why? He goes, uh, he's like, he taps over and he says, he says like three targets in proximity of, of door breach. Basically he's saying that like, I can like breach the door and like get rid of the captain and his two guards right now. It's in, we might, it's also kind of like, based on where it's positioned, it might hurt some of the other crew too. But it'd probably really, kill those three guys. I really don't want to hurt or I don't care about their captain, but I don't want to hurt anybody else on that ship. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, you, you, you tap him back you tap him back like no no cash no, you know, no collateral. No. And uh Edward kinda of comes back and says, Well, so this this is a terrible day for those of the faith that people like you want to come and just shake it instead of building it up. This is, and this, this guy's like kind of like you can tell he's kind of trying to lose it. He's trying to gain desperate grasp of authority here. Um, he says, uh, "Well, listen, it's been nice having you. I think we're going to part ways at this moment, um, and uh, you and here in the Aether system have have the have the best of luck." And he's like going for like the airlock button, like he's gonna like blast it open. What do you guys wanna do? Or what do you wanna do? I'm gonna see if I can get Jamal to just, I the just in, and I just say fuck it, let's All do right. it. We're so Jamal clicks the thing, the breaching charge goes off, blows up the inner air, airlock. Um, you can see that like, like I mean, the door just comes off, like a big chunk of the door kind of comes off, and like it, it plows with the captain, plows over his two guys. You only see one of them. Like really kind of went like he got thrown off for the captain you're not sure where he's at you're not sure where the other guy's at um there's some shrapnel in the room the other the other guys are kind of taking their oh, sh whatever alarms start going off there's like tons of particulate in the air uh sue and ralph come in with guns and like have guns trained on everybody basically like, you know get on your knees, get on your knees. like they're going over their comms on their on their suit and then um but uh one of the guys is kind of getting to get this thing and he like he looks to the wall he looks to he looks to your direction. He looks to the wall, and like he starts running for the wall. Uh, what do you want to What do you want to do, Wyatt? Can I quickly glance to see what he might be looking yeah, at? Yeah, give me a seeing test. Uh, let's see. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, you can blow some fortune on that if you want to. Yeah, you I will. To Sixteen. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay. So. Um, you get to 16 and like you can see that he's going for what looks to be like a whole like an emergency hull patch kit um like kind of thing you use like to seal a small breach and uh yeah it looks like he's going for like something like to seal a breach i'm not gonna okay i'm gonna okay. be like letting go as okay. either i don't want ralph or anybody to okay attack. and so like he starts coming up and you tell ralph like let this guy through and like like ralph and, and he kind of like he kind of looks at you guys he looks at the, like the what's left over of like the airlock door and he comes past you, he's like coughing and shit. And you're actually starting to notice what's going on is that there's a little bit of the smoke that's in here. It's starting to go out through the airlock. It looks like the outer airlock door got like damaged a little bit. And he's going up and he's like, he's like putting stuff up, putting the blister up and getting it all set up to like do it, try to save it out. Um, now, I want to also quickly look for the captain, see if I could see him anywhere. All right. Uh, uh, give me a searching test. Is that another perception test? I actually got searching. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's see. Eight. 16. 16. I mean, what's left of him is under the airlock door. You're, you're, Sue and Ralph are pretty much staying on the door. Like he's squashed. The other two guys, are they? One of them right? got thrown across the room and he got like, he got, he took a pretty big run of it. Uh, one of the, like, one of the other crew members, like, attending him, like, first aid and everything. Like, like, I, he's still alive, but he's bleeding pretty bad. The other guy you think got like might have gotten splattered off the other side of the, the other part of the door that went off. You, or you well, don't I'm, see him at least. I'm gonna put my hands up like okay. this and I'm under my hand and I'm gonna be like, I'm just gonna put it down. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's he's off and he's 
like they're all they're all out of it. I mean, they're they're done. Like they're not gonna fight back. The other guys in the in the room are kind of like have their hands up. Some are some have their hands up. Some are like trying to fix stuff up. Um, some people have gone back to their training. Some people have gone to like much more like docile. Like, oh, shit, you know, this is real. They're actually on board. Uh, everything and um, the like they're like they're like this is like this is going on, right? This is really happening. This is real. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want it to get to this point, but I'm not letting you guys risk your lives. I'm not letting that huddle yeah, yeah. life for no reason other than his own ego. Well, look, I, this, this, one of them's like these hydroponicists, like these hydroponics guys, right? Like you guys got food, right? We got food. We got, we got everything. We can keep you safe for as long as it takes for this to blow over or whatever's going on. Yeah, some of them are kind of like, they're like, look, uh, O'Neal there on the ground, he points to the one guard. He's like, O'Neal's not going to go for this, but I don't think he has much of a choice right now. I mean, he's, he's alive. Be a... He's being tended to, but he's like not in good shape. Is he going to be a problem when he's better? Uh, he's got to, the one of them kind of says, I think he's got to get better first. So, I mean, you got, and, and, I mean, he's got injuries where you're like, this guy's going to be out of commission for like a month. Um, you, you think he probably has broken arm, broken leg. I mean, he's not in good shape. Um, Better than what uh, happened to your captain there. Yeah, and, and like, yeah, there are, and some are kind of like, it's it's pretty grisly, like, looking at it, but it's it's, it's done. Um, they go, something we could throw over this, because this is, I mean, as much yeah, as they'll, he was... they'll clean it up. They'll, they'll, they're going to clean it up. So, so, and there's only, like, there's only about seven of them in here now. Like, there's other people on the, on the ship, and they go, look, um... All right. Who's the XO? Who who's second in command here? They kind of like they look over the one like the, the one of them kind of points to the other guy you killed. Who's third in command? Yeah, our second officer. Uh, he's on the outside right now. Uh, he's probably wondering what's going on. Uh, he's gonna have to come over to the other airlock. And you guys Let's see, see like there's another airlock in the room, and like it starts to like there's a guy inside of it uh, waiting to come in. And he goes, "Yeah, that's that's it. That's um." That's our XO, or that's the second officer. I guess he's captain now, huh? Shit. And that's the one that helped us to get in. That was the one that tricked you to get in. All right. They they, they told you that Clark it got like is in the brig. The guy that actually was helping you supposed to help you. Oh. Got, yeah. Okay. They swap they swap suits, man. They swap suits. All right. That's that. Yeah, it's crazy. They're, they're not dumb. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you like they're like like brilliant in the big scope of the cosmos, but they're not they're not dumb. Uh, when he went. <laughs> when he went outside the ship, did he have a gun on him? Uh, he could have. He could have had a pistol, but like oh, he didn't see a assault rifle or anything like that. Okay, yeah, he's in the he's in the airlock and he's coming on the comms. He goes, "Let me." He goes, what the hell's going on in there? He's like trying to look through it and everything. I'll I'll, uh, I'll come up to the window yeah. and I'll be. Yeah, looks like you're the captain now. We're gonna he's have like, the same last guy. Wait, where's where's Edwards? And he's like looking through it. And you're like, do you want to tell me he's under the other door? And one of the, one of the guy, one of the other guys from the ship comes up. He's like one of the mechanics. He's like, he's like, hey, Edwards is gone, man. He bows off too much. Like, look, this is real. Like, we gotta, we can't be up here. We, we're not gonna last like that long up in orbit here. I mean, hell, we're like, we were hoping to get pick up some food for God's sake on, on you know, while we're down there. And they're like, we go down the well and give up the whole ship. And they're like, ship's we done, man. We don't want your ship. It's your ship. We'll just keep that right here. It's your ship. Unless you decide to stay with us for the rest of uh, whatever, however long you want, that the ship's yours. We may ask you to borrow it at some point, but your crew can come with us. Yeah, you hear suit. Uh, Ralph comes over his comms. And goes, yeah, man, the food's pretty good down there. And one of them kind of laughed. They kind of like, all right. So, well, look, you um, you take a second here, and um, the guy that's the current captain, he's like looking around, and and he goes. He's like, what do you make of this? And he asked the mechanic, and the guy's like, look, man, like, chain of command is all messed up right now. And, like, we're down a few people. O you know, O'Neill's over there in the corner bleeding. Uh, look, we're... I say we take him up on it, man. We just take we take the ship, what's left of it, head out, start repairing on the way out there. The, the, cap the guy, the guy goes, I want to stay on, I want to stay on board the ship. And I want to I want to stay on board with at least three of my crew members to do to oversee repairs of the ship. Okay. You do know that the ship will not operate well with only four members on the ship. Yeah. Like it would be hard for them to run the ship. They could do it, but it's not going to be pretty. 
mean, you can run the ship with one person, but it's like, if you ever watch Star Trek when there's like one person trying to operate the ship, it's not fun. <laughs> so. No, I, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair and I don't right. have a problem. All right. Well, I appreciate, I, I appreciate, Jesus Christ, I appreciate you listening to us. Well, I really didn't want to kill your captain. I was hoping he would either listen or let you guys come with this, but he had his mind set up. Well, I think it's a hard thing hearing that your home's been your home's been taken by a bunch of uh, terrorists, essentially. It's not just your guys' home; it's yeah. all of our home. We all have family on Earth or Mars or. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. Um. I'll uh. We'll give up command. I'll give up command of the ship. Uh, we'll go ahead and. We'll slave it to the Ice Fang. They can guide us back in. Um, we'll start doing repairs, get the thrusters up. Uh, I'm not going to work with the torpedo tube. That's not a big priority right now. If you need things to help with repairs, let us know. Yeah. Slayer is more than happy to send stuff over to help. Uh, you get on the comm through the helmet. Uh, you hear from Jamal. Jamal goes, he's like, hey, I'm going to tell you real quick. Vega's going to want a garrison on here. He's going to keep He's want to keep some people out. Just keep an eye on these guys. That's you want. I, I mean, Jamal's like, but Jamal's kind of like, I gotta go back to the ship though. <laughs> I can't, we can't, like, we have a tiny ass crew, man. We're tight, like, that's a problem. You go back, and we could, st- me and Ralph and Sue could stay okay. until the Sinclair King. All right, so that's what it sounds like the plan is, is to, is to sit here on the ship, have an escort back. You guys help out the ship, oversee it, talk to these guys, bring them to speed on the whole situation. Um, let them know. You, uh, I'm, I'm curious if you, if you would let them know about Sebastian, Sebastian Pope being out here, who actually owns the Ice Fang. No. No? Don't tell them about the man behind the curtain? Okay. I mean, if it comes up somehow in conversation, like, it's all Well, they're, to... they're going to ask about, like, how the hell is the Ice Fang out here so far by itself? Because a ship like that shouldn't be isolated. They have to have a ship it's on or, like, a station or something. But they would just... get suspicious pretty quick. Yeah, I'll just be like, it's... You know, investors probably, doing an private equity firm. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so we're back and we're on soil. All right. I'll go into every little detail of every little thing you want to know. I'm here in the cargo bay. You can see that they actually have like, so the cargo bay here is like divided in the base. Like there's like the main area you're in, which is kind of like, it just goes straight through the ship. But they kind of have like the ship's kind of cleverly designed. They have these retrofitted cargo bays on the side. Um, and basically one of them is like full of like supplies for the ship, like food, repair gear, life support crap. There's some military, there's like some, um, yeah, like life support crap. The other one is like, these guys have a fuck ton of torpedoes. Like they could have outlasted the ice bang in a torpedo, like brawl. Um, they have a ton of munitions. They have a lot of, they have armor. Um, they have weapons. These guys are like, they're gun nuts. I mentioned they're Baptists, so like, <laughs> they're like uh, there's every. They're, 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 there's a that, that Venn diagram comes very close to a circle. So. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, they have a lot of weapons. I wanted to see if there's a way we could uh, until we're safely all on the same side, lock them out of their weapon system. They have one torpedo tube down, the other one's, the other one's up. Um, Vega has control of the ship right now. They basically said it's, it's they, the only way they could actually get access right now to the weapon systems is if they went to the weapon system manually and fired it. Like, oh, one, not- like went outside the ship or between the hulls. Actually, does this have, does this have double hull? I think it's double hull. No, it's not have double hull, hull plating. The hull, the, that's one thing about you know about the ship. The hull plating is like shockingly thick. Like, like you think you're not even sure PC rounds would even penetrate this thing. But like, uh, or if they did, they'll be slowed down enough they won't do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the uh, no, they would have to get outside and like man, like or like manually control them. Um, okay. So they don't really have like a direct. Um, you also could just unload all the ammo from the PDCs and from the torpedoes. I mean, it's, these aren't things you can just like. This isn't like it isn't like loading a handgun. It's like it's a procedure. It's like a, it's like a half an hour long procedure to like reload a full magazine of, of torpedo tubes. I'm not going to mess with them then. Okay. I'm just going right. to let it be. All right. 
So you guys decide to kind of like uh, set it up, get back in orbit. Uh, Jersey can Ross ready to help out. Uh, you guys have plenty of hull plating to bring out. Um, the ship is completely repairable. Um, that's not a problem. And uh, it actually seems like a lot of resources. So it seems like coming out here this far off to the edge of it uh, hasn't really been for nothing in terms of bringing back resources. But you guys are bringing back about um, 20 people from this ship. And I think it was like a dozen off the electric fog or something like that, I felt like. So you're bringing back more people. Um, and the electric fog is a mix, but they seem like pretty good workers. Some seem like they're gonna go down the well. Some seem like they're gonna stay on the Jersey Ken Ross. Um, and there's even some de debate about, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of debate right now going on. Um, as you're kind of coming back, Vega pop, um, as you guys start going back towards Mundos, Vega, you and Vega have been talking a bit and Vega's like, uh, really, he says, uh, good job. Good job. Exo Thompson. Um, well, listen, uh, I want to make, I want to be, I want to put all the cards on the table here if you don't mind. Like to hear what you have to what you have to say. Well, Mr. Pope is uh, very happy with this, with all things considered, things that they've shaken out. And uh, based on all the circumstances, he's not interested in doing this whole little uh, phone tag thing that we do here. Um, he wants to have a face-to-face -face meeting with uh, the senior staff of the Sinclair, the captain of the Electric Fog, uh, potentially even the director of Mason's Haven. Though, from my understanding. Uh, Myrtle, Myrtle, the whole senior crew seems to speak for Mason's Haven fairly well. And, um, but he's in the, he's, uh, he's waiting for my recommendation one way or the other if this uh, new captain of, uh, this new captain of the, um, what's it called? The Adrian Rogers. I don't know, God, I almost, I almost lost that name. Um, but this new, this new captain of the Adrian Rogers, who, who you guys, you know him as, uh, Captain, he's Captain Eugene Simon. And uh, Scott, if you'd be so kind after the session to let me give type out all those names I gave you so I can put them in my own notes. <laughs> I think I got them all. You got them all, yeah. So Cap <laughs> currently Captain Eugene Simon, the new captain of the Adrian Rogers. Um, he's like, but he's waiting for my, my assessment of the situation and he'll take my orders. And honestly, I think you have a better, you have a better crack on the guy. This uh, Captain Simon, do you think he'd be worthwhile bringing on board the cryo brand for a meeting? I think to earn trust with these people on this ship, yes, I think so. All right, I'll, I'll put that on my recommendation then. But listen, um, don't uh, don't head down the well quite yet. Um, he's got some uh, we got some interesting prospects here. We brought uh, we've actually brought up apparently Pope brought up some of the eggheads of Star's Edge, and we're gonna hope you have a meeting here to figure out what to do next um, and everything. So uh, yeah, we'll bring you on board. We'll go and escort everyone over. Um, Unload the Sinclair, get that all set up for the uh, on the Jersey Ken Ross, and then we'll uh, we'll bring everyone overboard via the Sinclair. Sound good? Yeah, I, I think it's a good plan. I'll let the Sinclair know. So you got this, and the well, the Sinclair already knows they're good. They're on the way back. Everyone kind of knows, but um, so now it seems like there's going to be this big meeting between the major factions: Mason's Haven, uh, Star's Edge slash Sebastian. So Star's Edge people, Sebastian Pope, the Electric Fog people, survivors. And then the captain of the Avian Rogers, all aboard the cryo brand next week on Abrax Precipice. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll end there, folks. Uh, listen, um, I uh, got some stuff going on here. Very excited to kind of uh, talk about it, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, it was a fun little one on one episode. Jeff Thunder Skies, okay? I enjoyed it. I, enjoyed I didn't it. really. My goal was not to kill the captain, though, but that kind of just yeah. Happened. But like, I, I think you could. I think there was a. I I could have seen a way going forward to that, but it was like it was too good of an opportunity not to take. Was kind of the problem, um, you know. I but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't trying to make a killing one, but I also felt like they lured you into. They did. To be fair, they did lure you into a trap. Um, yeah, they did. Good so, job, my good. <laughs> I'm glad you liked that one. Uh, <laughs> so that was that was the churn. By the way, that was the churn ten event. Uh, <laughs> stuff happens. Like well, listen, I do want to say uh, real quick, everyone, uh, we're, we're back on the 10th with a full crew and our first special guest of this phase. And we will be doing, in addition, a, um, well, a, uh, I don't want to put it like a, uh, then we'll say a very kind of, uh, we have a very special guest, actually. I'm, I'm very excited about this guest. Uh, 
you guys know I like to bring in guests, and I love like uh, having people that we haven't played with before that are big in the expanse. Um, and we've had a lot, a lot of diverse set of folks on here, but this is someone that like, I can't believe is like, one. I can't believe they even like responded to me, um, and two that they're it turned out they're a big gaming geek, <laughs> and three this person actually knows shit about space. But on um, October 10th, uh, we will be joined by one uh, Jesse Christensen. Uh, Jesse is one of NASA's top experts on exoplanets. Uh, this is a, a very cool opportunity. Uh, Jesse will be playing uh, Dr. Mel Holson, who is a aerospace expert, if you will. Uh, what that may mean, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll find out. Uh, and in addition, um, and it's actually associated with Star's Edge. I actually had to come up with the Star's Edge logo. Can you see this? Can you see the logo on the, uh, the thing? I was kind of curious. I came up with kind of a fun, weird logo. Um, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll tell you guys a bigger picture of it. I didn't want to show you guys yet because I don't want you guys to spoil it. Um, I know how you feel about Star's Edge. But in addition, um, we're also going to be playing a charity stream as well for that. So we'll be playing for World Central Kitchen again, which is one of our favorite charities. Um, you can donate money. Uh, we'll hopefully have some cool stuff in the... Um, incentives for folks so they can go on and get some cool stuff by donating money to World Central Kitchen, which we love. Jesse loves World Central Kitchen. Um, so I'm very excited to have her come play with us. Uh, she works down at Caltech. I actually figured out she only lives a few blocks from uh, Michael. Like, so it's kind of funny. She's like, oh, she's like, oh, he's in my backyard. I was like, yeah, yeah. So I think that's really <laughs> cool. Um, but I really, uh, it's gonna be a cool game. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, Jesse does some great uh, stuff regarding uh, kind of like public science. Uh, she was, in 2022 was uh, a TED fellow, which is like mind boggling. Um, so like this, I'm really excited. And it turns out they're a big D&D geek and wanted to play space stuff. And it was funny because they were making a the character and she she was like, I either want to be this like hardcore, like like ass kicker Marine or whatever it is, or I, I like, I'm going to be like a geek. And she's like, but I don't want to be like the space astronomy geek. And so she decided to go with like the more engineering focused person. I thought, oh, that's cool. Let's do that. That's kind of, let's kind of blend that in a little bit. Um, and so we're very excited to have Jesse play with us on the 10th. So we hope you can tune in. We hope you can donate. Um, I'm going to be this week in a big bad con um, playing, running the expanse for people. I'm bringing my cosplay, dude. I'm actually going to like, I'm going to dress up for the games. And uh, when we play, I'm going to have my, my, my flight suit on with my mag boots. I'm actually going to bring the mag boots. Awesome. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Well, What's that? I said I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, I want to give them the experience. I, you know, it's funny. The one expanse thing I get to use for that game that I have never got to use. You ready for it? I, I I've never got to use the expanse GM screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually have it, but I've never got to use it. So I can actually play it in real life, which will be fun. Um, and then uh, in addition, on Thursday night, um, I'm gonna be back with Amber uh, talking about the expanse video game episode five, which is concluded, which is pretty trippy. Uh, we'll be joined by Claire Lewis, who uh, writes for GameSpot and also uh, did the panel for Telltale Games. Uh, she had such a blast with us that she like really wants to uh, talk to us again, apparently, because I guess we uh, like our theories. Um, we're hoping that one I can't guarantee anything on, but we're hoping to have a very special guest for that one, which I'm, I can't say who it is, but if we get it, I'm very excited for it. Um, but uh, that's what's going on. And uh, yeah, we'll be back on the 10th. So, yeah. All right, guys. Right. I think so much for hanging out this night. Uh, it was a, that was a. I gotta say that was the most mellow chat we've ever had. No one really chatted, but I, I appreciate you guys watching. I can see a lot of you watching, and I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us, folks. Uh, right. Back on October tenth with uh, Jesse Christensen uh, from NASA's uh, Exoplanet Institute. I can't remember what's called Exoplanet Study Institute. I, I, have to, I, I should have had the name. I should have had that whole thing in front of me. I'll, I'll have it all on, on Twitter later on and, and, and Instagram and everything for you guys. But everybody, thank you for hanging out this night, Scott. It was a blast. That was a fun. We haven't we haven't played one on one for a long time. Did that. We need to do another Patreon episode sometime. We really do. Like those are fun. I have a lot of fun with those. Uh, those were those are super cool in the bonus episodes. So, but yeah, once, oh yeah. Speaking of which, uh, <clears throat> there's a Patreon link. All right, all right. We're out, guys. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.